Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 727 of Screw the Commute podcast. I'm here with Emmanuel Rose, and uh, he's going to talk about marketing to Gen Z. And another thing that he's uh, doing that I've been preaching for 100 years is he's making his hobbies tax deductible. He's going to talk about <laughs> uh, steelhead flies and fly fishing, and he's doing a lot of cool stuff with young people. And then I'm going to hit him up of, of why – uh, or what I think is the biggest problem when marketing to Gen Z. And we'll tell you, you know, he'll tell you what Gen Z is too when we bring him on. All right. I hope you uh, are following me on TikTok at, at Digital Multimillionaire. Uh, that one video I got is of like 650,000 views in the past couple of weeks. And I uh, probably got th uh, 250 little short training videos there. And they are short. One of them's only five seconds. <laughs> right? So, so uh, you know, it's pretty much everything I know I put into that one video. So um, <laughs> check that out at, at Digital Multimillionaire. And make sure you pick up a copy of our automation ebook at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. And you will thank me because we actually estimated just one of the tips in the book has saved me 8 million keystrokes. And I'm not kidding, not exaggerating. So, uh, I, I want you working with customers and developing products and services and trying to wrangle these Gen Zers into something, you know, that <laughs> that makes sense and uh, not fighting with your computer all day long. In fact, that's one of their big benefits. If us old farts don't know what we're doing, we can ask one of those kids and it'll be fixed in 10 seconds. So that's one of their big benefits. And uh, also pick up a copy of our podcast app at screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P. -P. Put us on your cell phone and tablet and take us with you on the road. All right, let's get to the main event. Emmanuel Rose is an author and marketing professional, and he specializes in branding, direct response advertising, and the day-to-day -day operations at his digital agency. It's called Strategic uh, E-Marketing. His uh, passion, I thought it was uh, had adventure in there somewhere. He'll, he'll correct that if that's wrong. Uh, his passion lies in helping companies achieve business success from cutting-edge marketing concepts and tools. His uh, unique approach to marketing strategies has resulted in countless clients reaching their goals. Emmanuel, are you ready to screw? Screw the commute, the commute Tom. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you betcha. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm doing really good. I'm looking forward to our conversation. I got two two times I'm going to say hate today. One is okay. I hate fishing. I hate <laughs> fishing. I remember as a kid, I paid a nickel a piece for worms and lost them all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. I can't stand to sitting there waiting for that fish to come up to me. But uh, you, but I do love making your hobbies tax deductible. So that's uh, tell us about uh, steelhead. I don't even. You I never what a steelhead was. I had to look it up. <laughs> well, I, it is. Um, well, number one, I'm a fly fisherman, and I like to say I come from an orthodox fly fishing family. Uh, in that, <laughs> I don't know what that means either. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. It means there's only one way to fish. It's fly fishing, and there's only one way to do it, and that's with dry flies. <laughs> okay. And, uh, so, um, yeah, if you've ever seen a river runs through it, uh, it, it gives you a little bit of an idea of of uh, the kind of the kind of family I grew up in. All right, but you're standing out there in the water with, I guess they're called waders, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I saw a picture of you standing like in the middle of a river, and I'm thinking, that guy is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what if that water gets in those boots and you just sinks you to the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, have, we, I have been I have been swimming before. Do and, they have uh, quick release things, or you know, <laughs> uh, that you can eject from those waders? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, there's there's a number of times I've been swimming, but uh, fortunately, uh, I carry two sets, so I can just go back to the truck and uh, get it cleaned up and get back out there. Well, no, I'm talking about drowning right where you stand. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't understand uh, those things. If you get a hole in it, what happens? Do you have to get a bicycle pump and patch it or what? <laughs> so yeah, so no, what do you sell over there on Steelhead? Well, steelheadonly.com is, uh, is Steelhead Fishing Flies. 
and uh, steelhead or anadromous uh, rainbow trout. And so anadromous means that they're born in freshwater. They live in freshwater for a year or two, and then they head out to the ocean. And That's kind of like the Gen Zs you're talking about. They're born <laughs> in a reasonable environment, and then they get thrown into this other environment. <laughs> into a big environment then they go they go wilding out exactly. as far as uh, as far as the japan and the bering sea and russia and they make this giant enormous trip and then they end up back in their parents house just like exactly the, just like the <laughs> now, uh, is this one of those things where you you flip the rod and the and the thing goes way out the uh the hook goes way out or what or is that a different yeah, kind of fishing yeah so the, the it's a, a spay rod is uh is the kind of fly fishing typically now done for steelhead um, on the west coast of the United States? Well, what and, is it when they stand on the side and they flip it and the the hook goes way out? Is it is that oh uh, yeah, spin fishing probably? It was like what you're talking about when you were a kid throwing bait. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of why I hate it. Too much stuff <laughs> going on. I hear you. <laughs> then also, uh, I saw another interesting thing. You've written children's books. Henry the Hawk, I think, is the star of your show. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. My grandson's name is Henry. And so I've written a series of children's books for him um, about uh, nature and natural history and uh, values and ethics that are important to me. And this book, Seeds to a Tree, is about forest fire and is gets uh, has a pack of seeds that goes with it so that uh, the, the kids can go and, and plant a tree after they're done reading the book. Beautiful, beautiful concept. And I, I also noted that it said three to six years old. However, you know, I watch the news a lot and uh, you probably should make that three to 26 years old because, <laughs> because nobody can read anymore. They're all morons. Did you see in Baltimore, 600 kids they studied in high school and um, only 12 could read at their grade level and That's over amazing. 120 were kindergarten level and same thing wow. in Chicago. So, uh, this, yeah. uh, this brings up some of the things you talk about with marketing to Gen Z is, I mean, you, you can't, you can't, um, you got a dummy thing down. You have to use glanceable marketing where it's like, boom, hits you fast. <laughs> you know, uh, that's, that's a ter actual term, glanceable marketing. And like, oh, wow. you know, yeah. it's just like on my TikTok thing. You know, it's funny because you talk about influencers. I'm 67 years old and I'm doing five second videos on, on TikTok. Five seconds is pretty, pretty summer, summer, summarily done. I <laughs> yeah. Guess, right? So the longest one is two minutes and 59 seconds. Most of them are around uh, uh, less than a minute, you know, put it that yeah. way. So, right. So. Well, the attention span is three to six seconds. So five seconds hits it right in there. Yeah. I read that thing about goldfish. Their attention spans longer than, uh, the, your Gen Zers, <laughs> like nine <laughs> seconds. <laughs> oh, I I have used that I have used that quote before too. Right. <laughs> but it reinforces the value of video, Tom, and so that's yeah. that's one of the short, one of the fundamental short things, form yeah. video and vertical video. Because I've been in video for forty five years. I wow. learned I'm at initial training in Hollywood, and it, yeah. a lot of things that used to be absolute taboo are commonplace now two that come to mind is vertical video we used to make fun of people shooting their camera the wrong way because right. it was all yeah. horizontal and also jump cuts it used to be jump right. cuts was the sign of an idiot uh marketer or idiot editor that didn't know what they were doing and now yeah. you're an idiot if you aren't jump cutting <laughs> so, uh, so uh, well that and just editing in general right yeah I mean, it's amazing how much really what rough uh, B roll is used as primary video. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you uh, you got multiple cuts per second sometimes, you know, and they, yeah. they the TikTok is, recommends two to three seconds per scene, you know, so so it's a different world out there. And uh, you did some um, uh, directing and counseling, I guess, in the youth uh, market. Yeah, way I, back. I, uh, grew up uh, grew up going to summer camps. And then when I kind of aged out as the participant, I started working at the summer camp. Uh -huh. And so Camp Jack Hazard is the name of the camp that I, I work with. And um, it's in the central Sierra, out just outside of Yosemite. Wow. And it's unique in that it, it, every kid that goes and visits that camp 
gets to go backpacking for three days and two nights. And so uh, talk about, you know, disconnecting and, and, and kind of going back in time. Um, and what years parents, were you doing that? Let's see. Geez, that was a million years ago. That would be in the 80s. 80s yeah, see, there was 90s. no cell phones. Nowadays, the kids would all <laughs> be on some kind of drug to, to keep because they'd be shaking with no cell phone in their hand. <laughs> yeah, well, they still do it. And uh, this where this location is, there's not cell service. So they, oh, they got to go and rough it. I'm telling you, I bet you they're sneaking pills in there because they can't handle <laughs> it. Now, I know way back you had uh, some dreaded, uh, it's kind of a, a a dirty word on this podcast, the uh, J-O-B. You know, you had some of those. <laughs> yeah. So tell yeah. us about that and tell us uh, when you transition to your business because a lot of people are stuck in a dread of job and they want to get out and in, into their own business yeah i had i had two very distasteful experiences in a row um one was that i built a multi-million dollar business unit for for a company uh and uh, at the request and and benefit of the owner who who then reneged on the bonus uh. that that was uh promised so um that you know that was that was distasteful and it's not an uncommon story, uh, you know. Um, then the next thing that happened was I went and to work for a friend of mine and, and um, for a, a pretty big jewelry company and um, basically just got lost in the morass of uh, middle management and then uh, was told not to make any changes for 90 days. <laughs> and then then they kind of fired me for not doing anything. You know, one of those deals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, so i got fired for that job and i'm like i am way too skilled to be getting fired from some job i don't even care about that much so and clearly i'm unmanageable so i better <laughs> right. just work for myself <laughs> so how did you make the transition what was the moment that you decided all right i'm going to start my own business and did you save up yep. money did the cold turkey was your family on board i mean how did that transition yeah i mean literally i'm I'm taking the taking my big pens and two yellow pads out to my truck and i'm like what am i gonna do i'm not gonna get another job right and so i'm like well what what am i gonna do then i gotta start a business and uh, i kind of did that personal inventory Mm -hmm. said this is what has always interested me i've always been involved in sales and marketing and product development and uh this was when uh you know, social media was just really starting to to get some traction. It's been well, 14 years now, 14 years ago. So I said, well, I don't know that much about it, but I'm going to figure it out. And um, I uh, I had a friend who rec- who knew that somebody was looking for a new agency. And uh, and so I, I built out built out some materials real quick and signed that first client. You became a um, MySpace expert, right? <laughs> <laughs> we were facebook and twitter was kind of the beginning days and, that was oh four uh, i think so yeah that was it was a million years ago <laughs> but yeah i still have that client so i signed that very first client there's still a client of mine and uh been able to transition around through all the changes that have happened over the last you know decade and a half all right, but did had you did you save money up or did you have some type of severance package? You know, when that- you know, I just I basically I just uh, I just in the in the cruelest bootstrapping way possible, I just lived on my savings and um, and built out you know a website and um, and suffered through it until I, I picked up. I think in the first two months, I picked up three clients, and that was just enough to enough to starve mm-hmm. yeah. and, 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 and and learn. Uh, did, did do you have a family? Uh, I have I have a wife, and she's got grown grown children. So. Was she was she around at that time? Yeah, and she's she's an entrepreneur also. Oh, so, right, so she she it wasn't a big fight with her to to do this, then, right? Not at all. No, beautiful. Uh, she's yeah. She she knows she knows the the story of unmanageable because she is also <laughs> too unmanageable. <laughs> yin and yin or yang and yang. One of the, one of the... <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> we're soul twins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so now I'm going to tell you why I think it's difficult for people like me to um, to market to uh, Gen Z. And by the way, okay. folks, I, I had to look it up. Gen Z is. Uh, 11 years old to 26 years old is that 
that right? Yeah, that's about right. right okay. Now, yep. All right. Well, here's here's why people like me um, have trouble marketing to them. Ready? Yeah, go. We don't like them. <laughs> we hate them. <laughs> their, their values suck. And uh, I'm a boomer. I don't even yep. like millennials. We had a millennial expert on here. I'll give you a little background here. So yeah. first of all, uh, one of my mottos is if if you're not early, you're late. All right. right. So I got this millennial expert on here and uh, I'm telling her like, I can't stand it. These people don't want to be on time. She said, well, you know, Mr. Antion, time is kind of flexible to our generation. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, I have a store. And so I'm going to put a sign on the door that says, open at nine. Ish. maybe yeah or, yeah, yeah ish or uh it depends on if they feel like being here at 9 30 or whatever so just stand yeah. out there and wait <laughs> All right. Right. she couldn't answer that so uh so we don't like them they're it's like i said the uh the, and and we especially don't like somebody that's wet behind the ears has never done a thing in their entire life telling me to buy an electric car uh, with no inkling of background experience like you're in the in the west coast right yeah i mean sure. yeah. i mean even uh, my, and by the way here's another little sidebar for you my one of my uh, i've written 25 books my next one wow. is called highly educated idiots and so <laughs> your coast is full of them <laughs> all right yes, yes it is <laughs> and and they're saying okay buy an electric car hawk your lungs to buy an electric car but don't charge it right? because we, <laughs> we don't have enough electricity to charge it, but you yeah. will be able to brag about having your electric car. See, so right. when they, some little punk, you know, comes up and is telling me this kind of stuff with no background, never did a thing in their life, living off uh, my generation's money. I don't like that. So, yeah. so there's your little background of why I think we have trouble. And uh, so your job is to say, okay, Tom, all right, you're an old fart. What are you going to do about it? They're coming up and they're going to swarm you, <laughs> swarm around. Yeah, they, you. That, so, that's the true story. So take it away. Of them. Take yeah. it away. So there's 68 million on there's there's there there are more of them than there are boomers. So that's the that's the tidal wave. And and Tom, I, I got to tell you, there is a, a part of me that is not that far of, away from your opinion. <laughs> and but the the flip side is that they are very caring and very ethical. They may be different ethics than you have, but they're very grounded in what they believe. So that in itself is is noteworthy and um, is respectable you know, from from my perspective. And as a business, you've got to pay attention to it. Um, well, are, also you, are you talking about stuff like uh, the environment? You know, they're environmentally conscious and yeah. the green yeah. New Deal, all this stuff. Uh, and so, their commitment to inclusion, you know, that is a, it's a big value of theirs. All right. But here, here's, here's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working. It's going to be like the old point counterpoint show. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So uh, this inclusion thing has gone too far. Airplanes are doing mere, near misses and crashing everywhere because they're saying, oh, well, if you're a certain color, you can, you got to be a pilot, not can you fly this airplane and get us there without killing us? <laughs> right. right. And I hear you. are you going to want uh, somebody that just got their position um, in the heart surgery arena to operate on? <laughs> That's where things, uh, you know, I'm all for moderation. It's gone too far in this inclusion craziness because when people aren't qualified, there's no merit uh, meritocracy anymore. That's, that's my problem with it. Yeah, and that is an interesting point. And uh, you know, as a as a marketer, I say, wow, okay, so that's that's their belief is inclusion, diversity, equity, inclusion. Yeah, I might have political opinions about that that we could talk about over a beer. But <laughs> if I'm going to sell them something, right? Uh, I I need to I need to to mirror at a, at an authentic level the things I believe about those things in order to speak to them. So, but will so that's they my listen? Filter. See, my problem is is there's no debate anymore. It's all mm -hmm. I hate you. You're in, you're you're bad because you don't believe like me. That's that's and I, I'm I'd be happy to talk and debate, but when you're you're just shut down, you know they just shut yeah. you. Look at they did to that 
that the federal judge at Stanford Law School, did you see that on the news? <laughs> they pretty much kicked him out. He had to have guards to get him out of there. And these were law students. And uh, no, there was no debate. It's like, shut up. You're a judge and, and you've hurt people. So screw you. We're not going to debate. We're not even listen to you talk. You know, that's my problem with 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 that is you can't, you know, there's no debate anymore. How are we going to get that back? Well, that's a good a good question. Um, I think part of what's going on here also is that, you know, these these are young people and and that there's the, the exuberance of youth. I know I was a knucklehead when I was a kid. <laughs> I, I thought I knew a lot of stuff I didn't know. And I'm amazed that I didn't get more right crosses to the face by my, <laughs> my dad and, and other people for <laughs> some arrogant, you know, chicanery. <laughs> But if you think back to even in the 60s with like Mario Savio and the free speech guys in Berkeley, you know, they were they were in in, in similar ways acting out their uh, their beliefs and their ethics and challenging authority. And that's part of this. The, the transition from being a kid into a teenager into a young adult is is pushing those boundaries. And we I understand. I, I mean, I feel, too, a little bit muzzled myself. Um, but it's uh, it's a conversation and 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 leadership is what they need. And this this idea that you have about uh, highly educated idiots um, is interesting also because they are the most educated group of Americans. Right <laughs> exactly. Now. Well, yeah, except the, you know, I have a school, you know, I have a, a the only licensed uh, dedicated internet marketing school in the country. And I believe in education. I'm telling you, but it seems that all the the only thing that's happening now they're being taught how to protest and how to and being indoctrinated, not how to read, <laughs> how to act. Yeah, you know, so that's yeah. my and, problem. Or think critical thinking, right? Is and really missing. And also, I have this uh, quiz. Um, you know, it's called the college ripoff quiz. It's the seven ways that colleges uh, and universities are totally robbing families. I mean, like uh -huh. they're. They're eight, the, the tuition has gone up eight times the cost of living. How do you right. justify that? You know, and, and so, so um, the, uh, you know, there's a big push away from uh, colleges and universities because there isn't, the education is not what people are paying for. And then they're coming out with enormous debt and then competing for jobs at Starbucks. You know, so that's, it's, it's, a, it's going downhill. That is, uh, that is one of the challenges we have with the education system. That and uh, and having having people who can think critically and uh, and understand what free speech is. But we're seeing that all over all over the United States right now. A real challenge with that. Yeah, and and I, the one thing I do miss is that we didn't have um, transgender strip shows in kindergarten where I came from. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> I did feel like I was slighted. <laughs> a little bit there. Well, there's still time to catch up, Tom. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll. Uh, uh, I don't have any kids, so it's hard for me to attend without having an excuse to attend. But <laughs> so, um, so tell us um, more about the book and what's in the book. What would people uh, learn, and what would I learn from this book? With you see the kind of attitude I have. <laughs> so yeah, well, and and I think you are a great example of of. Uh, what the uh, what the marketing program needs to be in that uh, the the leader of the business the the manager the the uh, the person who started the business or the CEO needs to be the primary influencer and needs to be uh, out in front leading the marketing in in that respect mm -hmm. but they're the face of the brand just like Richard Branson or Kylie Jenner. Yeah, now that's I heard you say that on another interview. I thought, can you get to two further ends of the spectrum? <laughs> <laughs> that now at least Richard Branson's kind of crazy. Uh yeah. you know, because well, he's Kylie's pretty crazy too. Well, yeah, but, but for different reasons. Yeah, but she's she's gorgeous <laughs> enough she doesn't have to be crazy, you know. So but he's yeah. not, but he's he, you know, flies in balloons and does crazy stuff, you know. So it's he's it's like Red Bull should sponsor him. Um yeah. So, uh, so yeah, uh, but they are definitely the faces of their business. That's for sure. Yeah. And so this is the thing that I've seen uh, with, with small businesses and even mid-sized businesses that the CEOs or the people who founded the businesses are of this, uh, you know, they're Gen Xers or boomers. And we were trained that 
you do your business at, at work and you leave your private life at home and the two don't cross. Well, we need to bring a little bit of the private life and the human into the marketing campaign and into uh, what's called the social CEO. Um, I bet so, you're not going to see that from those SVB bank people out there. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't think They're, they want to be the face of anything. They want to be the face of Venezuela. Yeah. So it's non-extradition. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's the the challenge is that um, we need uh, we need the the business uh, leadership to be uh, out in front and and talking about not just the business and the products, but then also about the staff and the culture and then the community involvement, because every every business is involved in their community in some way. And, um, and it's just not publicized enough. Now, I've heard you talk about a, a employee advocacy. What, what do you mean by that? So this is a, a concept that's been put into action with uh, Fortune 500 for a long time, and it's gotten a lot of traction in those bigger corporations. And that's when the, the company or the brand is leveraging the employees, social media profiles, um, to tell us the story of the company. And on, on a paid basis, are they paying these people? Oh, uh, it could be paid or it could be gamified. All right, so um, this is, is this like a precursor to the UGC? Uh, you know, the user it's, generated it's, content? Yeah, it's similar to, it's a, uh, um, user generated content, but from the employee side. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to think of it, Tom. Um, and what we know is that about 50% of people are already po uh, posting about the company or they're resharing about the company. And so it's um, a chance to um, increase the um, the reach instantly for a brand. And um, in, in successful deployments of, of employee advocacy, about 60% of the employees participate. Um, and so, you know, it's not for everybody, but it is a great way to give traction in, in for HR and hiring and retention of employees generates, um, ultimately, uh, a lift in sales. So All right, but what I'm not, what I'm not clear about, Emmanuel is, isn't there some skepticism in the marketplace that, you know, that, that employees have been told to do this rather than is, uh, sincerely uh, telling how great their company is? Yeah, I think it depends on the on the content, right? If it's uh if it's let's say employee outings, you know, happy hour outings and or you know going to bowling or doing a bowl for kids sake fundraiser, those sorts of things um have got uh, provide a lot of lift to to a company and they provide a feeling of the culture for for that business. So the latest ones I'm thinking about, people are making fun of a little bit in that uh, like the Twitter takeover you know, they're, they're, they're making fun on online of these people going around showing their pool tables and how they eat for free at Google and, <laughs> right. and everything. And yeah. then 7,000 of them just got fired. <laughs> yeah. So, oops. We, maybe yeah. we should have worried about working a little bit more and pool a little bit less. Yeah. No, again, it's gotta be, it's gotta be authentic and it can't be too glossy. Right. But it ha mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the story of the company and that helps, helps to uh, attract and retain uh, humans both on for employment and for doing business. So you would, you, you generally call this, um, the CEOs that, uh, are, are in this arena, social CEOs. That's the term. Did you call Yeah, I, I say that's the mandate mm -hmm. going forward from, to, from today forward is the social CEO. And, and if company's not doing it, they're, they're becoming irrelevant. All right. So if you were going to pick one marketing technique to hit this uh, generation, um, uh, today what would it be video short form would, video right i would do everything i would do everything with video i and uh, i think short form video is an editing tactic inside a video right um so uh it should be a monthly a monthly campaign around video and then and then vayner chucking it into 64 pieces of content all right but vertical vertical video the only vertical with a lot of jump cuts, Tom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. I actually uh, figured out, I did an episode on how to shoot a uh, horizontal video and use it <laughs> horizontally and vertically by the way you position the uh, subject. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> because it saves a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Putting them on U it. YouTube uh, standard. Um, yeah. 
where where would you put all the videos where 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 is your like do you have an order of importance of where you would put them well for for, for now Z, right now because it changes next week yeah. it could be different well yeah when tiktok's made illegal we'll have to right. come up with something else right <laughs> right yeah so i mean right now uh, tiktok is is the is crushing it for for these yep. this, this demographic so um that's primary um and then you know i still think that that youtube is a great repository in, in terms of uh you know as a as a search engine you've got lots of lots of ways to to get your content out via youtube so would you concentrate on shorts first or or the regular youtube yeah i would i would look at it by let's say we're going to do 10 minutes on the first monday every month and then we're going to chop it up and and uh, it'll be a 10 minute video just on youtube and then we'll create the shorts and the and the reels and and mm -hmm. you know push it out to the other platforms got it um through through editing so you'd go TikTok, youtube what would be your next in order looking at um at facebook live that it's not necessarily um th that would just be another another repo video repository mm -hmm. but we know that the, the the Z's are on TikTok and Snapchat primarily. So those are the two platforms uh, that you're going to have to go to. And then you're going to have to get it onto your website so they can go from those platforms to your website mm -hmm. and do the research they uh, need. So are they using the, any email anymore? Because guys like me uh, and everybody I teach, the big money is email. Uh, the, to, to us, the social media is a necessary evil to get them the heck off of there onto an email list. So do these Gen Zers even do email anymore? Their email is uh is just like a, a necessary kind of annoyance to them. Mm -hmm. So it's not anywhere that they're looking for um, purchasing information. So that's where, like you mentioned, the user generated content and influencer uh, style campaigns uh, driving driving them into uh, pages that have other social proof and then purchasing opportunities see i tried uh, to be an influencer but and i could not find a bikini that would fit me <laughs> 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 and, and especially one with like very little in the back and uh, yeah yeah it was yeah. It, it was I, I would say it was a failure I think we should all all be thankful for that, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to take a brief sponsor break. When we come back, we'll uh, ask Emmanuel what a typical day looks like for him, and we'll hear more about uh, the book and where you can get it. So, uh, folks, about uh, I don't know about twenty five years ago, I kind of turned the internet marketing guru world on its head, and that people at my level were charging fifty or a hundred grand up front to. Uh, help small businesses and i knew a lot of these people they're rip offs you give them 50 grand you never see them again so i said you know it's too risky for small business i'm a heavy small business advocate never had a job always small business uh so i said i'm gonna fix this and i kind of made them mad and that uh, i just charged an entry fee which was like 10 percent of what they were charging and then i tied my success to your success so for me to get my 50 grand you had the net 200 grand well, people kind of like this, and 1,800 students later, it's still going strong. Uh, it's the longest-running, most successful, most unique internet and digital marketing mentor program ever. And I have no trouble saying that because <laughs> I, I triple dog dare anybody, anybody else to put their program up against mine because I'm a crazy fanatic, and uh, they would be embarrassed because – this program has this giant estate in Virginia Beach where you actually get an immersion weekend where you live in the estate with me for an immersion weekend. We have our own TV studio where we shoot marketing videos for you. And uh, you also get a scholarship to my school, which uh, is uh, it's a $19,000 scholarship to the school where you can either use it yourself for extra training or gift it to someone. One guy had spent 80,000 bucks on his daughter's crap education. And she got a crap job when she graduated, he gifted it to her within four months. She was up to $6,000 a month just in the school. And then she started her own agency and took off like crazy. So 
very, very powerful. Plus, it's all one-on-one. -on -one. We don't believe in any group coaching here because I don't want you lumped in with someone more advanced or less advanced than you. It's not efficient that way. So I pretty much dedicated my life to helping small business people do this, and that's why it's one-on-one -on -one with myself and my entire staff. So check it out. There's no machine gun nest here, no high pressure, um, very accessible. So check it out at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com. And by the way, if you uh, have, if you just went to school, if you happen to be a first responder, military, law enforcement, or uh, nurse, uh, it's a 50% scholarship right up front. And all military will never pay more than $97 a month um, to attend this school uh, after their uh, modest down payment. All right, let's get back to the main event. Uh, we've got Emmanuel Rose here. He's uh, uh, got a lot of nice hobbies that he does. He helps the youth. And he helps tons of businesses uh, in their um, operations. So, Emmanuel, you built yourself a business here. What's the typical day look like for you? Do you get up early? Do you work out? Do you have a morning routine? What do you eat? Do you, uh, give us uh, give us an insight into the man. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I I get up about three forty five Pacific time. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> and then uh, spend the first hour of the day meditating. Okay. And and then. Um, and that provides the energy to get through the rest of the day for me. So from there, I take the dog for the, I got a Springer Spaniel, who's a hunting dog. So he's he, he's got to get out and do his thing. Um, we go for a walk and then uh, coffee with the wife first thing, and then after that, I spend a couple hours uh, at my desk writing and then doing client work managing my uh, my project managers and creatives for the agency and um and then I do my outreach to for uh, prospecting but you're Either, working at the house you stay at the house to work absolutely yeah, yeah I have the the last 13 years I've, I've worked remote so, thank God I uh, should have asked you that earlier we'd have had to kick you off the show if you weren't <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know everybody you know last couple of years during the lockdown everybody's like oh I love working from home and how <laughs> yeah. do you do this zoom thing and you know like all the things that come, like this is you guys are so behind the time exactly <laughs> So yeah, working in, in my home office, and I got uh, out the window. I've got uh, a redwood forest that goes out onto a golf course. So I, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate here. Beautiful. And, Where's the closest place you fish? Um, uh, let's see. There's uh, a Mad the Mad River is about seven minutes from my house. The Mad then, River, M A D. M A D. Yeah, M A D. <laughs> Mad. <laughs> that just kind of seems to me. See, all us East Coasters think that's totally appropriate for West Coast people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mad Hatter, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, and how often do you get be able to get out there? Uh, you know, I get out on a good uh, a good trip at least every month, and uh, so I'm either hunting or fishing on a big trip once a month. That's my commitment to myself. What do you hunt? Uh, I'm a bird hunter, so. Um, ducks and then upland 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 birds pheasants and chucker and quail see i i'm I, this is funny because uh I, I am pretty soon even though it's not technically kosher here in virginia beach i was going to get some chickens and oh. so do you ever hunt chickens <laughs> they're, they're pretty easy <laughs> yeah they are i just gotta i shoot them with my wallet <laughs> <laughs> the eggs is what you what you get the wallet out for yeah, um, for sure. All right, so uh, so great, uh, great lifestyle business you made for yourself, man. And so, uh, tell us uh, more about the book and how they get it. You bet. Uh, so I run through the what we've talked about: the social CEO, employee advocacy. I break down a little bit how to uh, how to go through a values values driven marketing campaign. How to how to tease out the values of the company, and then um, review. Uh, the need for e-commerce and uh, even even b2b companies have got to get every every aspect of their uh, their customer journey digitized so they can be done from a, a, a smartphone mm -hmm. and um, and then after that we do, do a deep dive in the psychographics and demographics of gen z get get a little uh nerdy on the psychology and um, and after that, we look at some case studies in a in a way that uh, a, a business, uh, a CMO, or a, a business owner could 
can start developing their own campaign specifically for this cohort. It's going to be pretty tough for some of this old farts like me to uh, to convert. Do you think? Yeah, I, I have big seen attitude it. change, uh, right? It's kind of like, uh, yeah, it's kind of like leading a, a, an old mule around. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, uh, I think that's the biggest hurdle. So, uh, can they can they transition into this uh, new kind of company with uh, maybe some of their underlings instead of them? You know, because it's some of these people are not really going to be cut out to be the influencer. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, that's a it's a good question, and um, I I think this it, the the reluctance to be the face of the business is really like you're saying is the biggest thing, mm -hmm. the, the biggest hurdle they have, um, and so uh, it it does work to get some other other people who you know, on the CMO or, or well, if you can get that some, employee thing going, you know, that, yeah, uh, that, yeah. that seems like that could uh, help with a transition a lot because the employees are naturally going to be younger and more uh, open to this stuff. That's, that's true. Yeah. And so implementing any one of these, uh, these parts of the program is better than not doing any of it. So yeah. I, I agree with you there, Tom, for sure. All right. So how do they uh, get the book? Uh, they can go to strategic emarketing.com or strategic adventure marketing. Yeah, I thought I saw the word adventure in there. Strategic yeah. emarketing dot com. Yeah. Strategic emarketing dot com. Okay. And uh and uh, your contact information is there if they have any questions. Yep. And I love to get uh connected with on LinkedIn and that way uh that way we can have a have a conversation from there also. Yeah, you got a lot of followers up there. That's that's cool. Well, thanks so much for coming on. I hope I didn't uh, push you too hard, but uh, you know it's important for you know us boomers to to either you know get into this or get out <laughs> because those, <laughs> we're gonna have all of our regular customers be dead, and then all we have left is these guys. <laughs> <to sell them. laughs> Bunch of old guys that don't want to pay for anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I really appreciate it, Tom. I enjoyed our conversation. Thank you very much. All right, folks, check it out at Strategic E Marketing dot com and uh like myself you know i'm in this game for the long haul i got to deal with these people and so i it's and they're not going to change to suit me put it that way so so uh, it's time to uh, to make some changes all right everybody we'll catch you all in the next episode see you later